All right. Yep. Hey, we are on with Tony to talk about olive oil and for you guys that are doing keto that can't always do that high saturated fat, why olive oil can be beneficial for you to be adding into your diet as a low carb athlete. And if you're following a low carb Mediterranean diet, but we're going to do some truth bombs that not all oh, olive oil is the same. So I have the expert of olive oil, <laughs> Tony and his family created a company. We're going to talk about and talk about the differences of what's on your store shelves and at Costco and those different clear bottles of olive oil that you don't always trust that's 100% olive oil. So Tony, thanks for coming in today and diving into uh, the low carb, high fat world of eating <laughs> and olive oil. No, you're welcome. It's my pleasure. So I, I love your story. Can you just kind of share the background of your kind of company that your family brought up and the how you co-founded yep. what the olive oil is about. I think it's a great story to share to start with. Yeah, I'll do the quick version. Um, <laughs> so olive oil has been in our family for generations since way before I was even thought of. Um, it, it comes from Southern Greece. Some people might be familiar with uh, Sparta. We're about 45 miles Southeast of there. So it's in the Southern easternmost tip of Greece. Um, that's where my father's little village of about 1500 is it's called Nyata. Um, so we spent our whole childhoods over there and olive trees are everywhere in Greece. And so is olive oil. Um, it, it was basically never thought of as a business growing up. Like I didn't know we had like an olive oil, you know, business. Um, we always pretty much harvested our olives and then would sell them in bulk. And then my father and uncle and a lot of other family members, they would like bottle a little bit of that olive oil and bring it back to the States with them. So they never really had a business selling it retail. Um, so halfway through my military career, I, I happened to have some bottles of our olive oil that my dad would bring back. And I shared it with some of my friends in the CrossFit gym that I was training at. And this is kind of like when paleo was coming up like 2011, 12 ish. Mm -hmm. And, um, so never thought of like starting an olive oil company um, with our olive oil that we've had, um, but people kept asking for it. And I was like, okay, maybe I can do something with this. Didn't really have a lot of time um, on my plate, but decided to start um, our own private label of our family olive oil with my sister and now cousin, Efrasini. Um, So yeah, we kind of just, um, it was something that was always around but we never really retailed it and brought it to the States in the way we do now. So were you raised here in the U S all your family? I was, migrated I was born here? in the U S and then we spent a lot of our childhood there. We would mm -hmm. actually, I went to school there, preschool and kindergarten. And I think we came back when I was in the first grade. Um, but we have my dad's first generation. So we have uh, very close ties. Like most of my grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, they're all there. So we would go back every summer and even throughout my military career, I would kind of like save up all my vacation and just go to Greece. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, after I retired last summer, it's been a lot. Well, I was supposed to be in Greece a lot more before COVID happened. But yeah, uh, but, uh, yeah so we have very close ties there. We go back there, you know, all the land that where the olives come from are our family land or our immediate neighbors. It all comes from one specific valley. Um, so we're not getting our olives from all over the country or world. It's all coming from one specific little area. Well, I know we love to travel in Europe mm. and around the world, but just Europe and having olive oil, <laughs> it's always my favorite thing going to Europe, you know, it, Italy and Spain and Greece, but it's so different. And I just, you know, you want to have olive oil. It's on your table. I just want to pour yeah. it all over everything with some sea salt and it just tastes amazing and then I come home and it's like <laughs> you know you're trying yeah. to replicate what you ate on your trip and why did it taste so good and and how you know, I've learned in Italy at least it was eating the bread was just a way for them to get the olive oil in their body so there's Pretty just much. a love for <laughs> olive oil and why does it taste so good and different than the stuff that we usually find in the grocery stores there's uh two two differences um the one 
is generally um, it's organic. Uh, there, there, there's two kinds of extra virgin olive oil. You have organic and non-organic. Um, non-organic, they spray it with pesticides. Uh, so when you're getting your organic olive oil, it's generally from an older trees that are much more mature. We're talking like well over a hundred years old, if not hundreds of years old. Mm -hmm. um, so having a quality organic olive oil is like step number one, um, because if you're spraying a tree with anything, that little olive fruit, which it is a fruit, is sucking in all those pesticides. And then when you press them and turn them into olive oil, that remains. Um, so that does go along with the, uh, basically the life cycle of an olive turning into olive oil. However, you treat that olive when it was on a tree, kind of has uh, the output of what it's going to taste like. So that's number one, plus the chemical makeup of it. And you really don't want to be consuming a lot of those things. Uh, the second and really another important piece and what we kind of lack here in the US or Canada or a lot of uh, other Western nations is they're not getting fresh olive oil. Um, it is a fruit juice. Um, it will last quite a few years if it's in the right conditions. That being said, the sooner you can get it, the fresher it is and the better tasting it is, but it also has all the, all the positive properties that make an olive oil good, like the polyphenols, they're most potent as soon as it's pressed mm -hmm. and it slowly degrades with time. doesn't mean like a year or two year olive oil is bad, but it's not as good as it was mm -hmm. or it should be. And generally, if you get like olive oil in Italy or in Greece or in Spain where it was pressed, they're keeping the fresh stuff for themselves there, Got you know, it. and, and sending it. <laughs> stuff over to America because most Americans, you know, that they don't know, they don't always know better until you've yeah. actually tried it. And then when you try, oh, this is what it's supposed to taste like. Okay. This is different, you know? So that's one thing where we kind of, um, looked at the whole industry as a whole, because we're a small company, you know, we can kind of, we have more, um, I guess we can make decisions a lot easier when there's only three yeah, of us, but um, yeah. So, but we said, you know, the biggest problem outside of what, once you have a bunch of really high quality olive oils, um, say we have 10 of them. And now the key from there is getting it to the consumer as fast as possible. Um, and unfortunately the whole grocery store, distribution chain really slows that process down. Yeah. So we're, we became pretty much direct to consumer um, and we bring over our olive oil every quarter and get it directly to the customer. We only bring enough to what we think we're going to sell in the next three to four months. That's good. So um, now with olives, they only, we only harvest them once a year. Now that harvest season is about five months long but they that only the fall or what time of year is it harvest? It starts mid fall, um, changes a little bit by a few weeks every year, depending on the mm -hmm. weather. Um, and it usually goes till about right now, um, which now is the beginning of March. <laughs> so end of February, beginning of March, um, it ends. Um, and then you'll have like your early harvest is kind of like the fall harvest. And then your later harvest is later in, into the winter. Um, so the, each tree only, you only harvest it once a year. So when somebody buys a bottle of olive oil, um, if it's like a one liter bottle, generally that's about a third of a tree. <laughs> yeah. So, wow. I know yeah. we, I was saying we moved from Seattle this past um, six, six months ago into our house mm -hmm. in North San Diego and we have an olive tree. <laughs> and I know mm -hmm. North of us, half an hour is Temecula and they have a lot of wineries in olive oil orchards up there make olive oil. So what's the difference of olive companies that are made in the soil could be different than yeah. made in the California, or I know there's one in Arizona, we went to olive all oil. over the <laughs> so world. So what's yeah. the difference yeah. of, I would think Greece and Italy would be much different soil that the olive trees are grown yeah. in. Are different. Well, the first, yeah, the first and foremost, the Met, you know, olives are indigenous to the Mediterranean. In the last hundred years, um, We've brought them here to the U.S., Australia, South America. I mean, they're growing olives all over the world at this point. Um, so the biggest taste difference is going to be the variety of olive. There's actually like thousands of different 
kinds of olives. So it's kind of like the best uh, analogy I give people is wine. You know, different grapes are going to create a different kind of wine. Yeah. And then outside of that, you might get the same grape that's grown in a different region. And the soil is going to make a difference. The weather is going to make a difference. Um, you know, so there's a bunch of little factors that will change the taste profile and the chemical makeup of the olive oil. Um, age as well, you know, and how often kind of like an industry um, trend is to, to make the uh, olive tree fruit as soon as possible. So they have to water it a lot more, a lot sooner. And that'll actually, as the tree grows, uh, change the taste profile of that olive oil, as opposed to a tree that grew naturally by itself for hundreds of years. And it's watered a lot less throughout the course of its life because that's how it was raised essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and that will actually have a difference in the taste of the olive oil. But. Yeah, I was just curious, just because we have now an olive tree in our yard <laughs> and then I see them around here and I know just, you know, Greek olives, Mediterranean diet, it's kind of where it all started. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I mean, it, yeah, real. everybody likes to claim like the first olive trees, whether it was like Israel or Syria or Greece, <laughs> they grow all over that region. And um, yeah, uh, the weather, the soil and the type of olive is really what makes it different. Well, that's good. So let's talk about the health benefits of olive oil. And I'm sure everyone's heard about benefits of, you know, have your EVO, have your olive oil each day. Oh, yeah. And people that are doing keto, it's, it's been a thing over the years. And, but before that it was a Mediterranean diet. And, you know, we know the Ansel Keys story of saturated fats, all that, there's a lot of myths in that study, but it did yeah. a lot of myths, but the big, probably the facts is the benefits of olive oil came out of that and the Mediterranean diet. Now there's kind of a, a new twist on the Mediterranean diets for low carb people that don't tolerate genetically a lot of saturated fat. So olive oil is a great alternative, good, healthy fat. So let's talk about the benefits of olive oil and then how we can implement it into our day. Diet. Yep. So as far as, um, we'll talk about benefits first and I don't want to make any like health claims, but they're the best thing I always tell people is because there's been so many, there's literally olive oil has been around for years. It's not like some of the newer, like avocado oil or coconut oil. They're kind of newer in the whole health space where olive oil has yeah. been around for literally thousands of years. So there's been a lot of, even throughout the last century, a ton of testing and a bunch of different studies conducted um, anywhere from like brain health to heart health to just being more vibrant, your skin being healthier. I mean, it, it's literally there. I like find new things like every day, like I'll be like, oh, olive oil helps this or that, you know, um, again, I'm not a medical professional, so I don't like to yeah. make claims <laughs> exactly, you know, oh, this is going to cure cancer or anything like that, you know, Yeah, but, but the claim it always is, is heart healthy and it's, yeah. it's a good, you know, healthy yeah, fat to add into your food definitely. plan. You know, and it, it does have, and you know, it's uh, anti-inflammatory properties. I mean, the polyphenols in a high quality olive oil should be through the roof, um, you know, so definitely. Uh, and then another thing to kind of look at is the people who've been consuming this stuff for generations are generally pretty healthy. Yeah. Although the Mediterranean people are kind of getting away from the Mediterranean diet where it's coming to more of what we're doing in the States, unfortunately. Um, but as in what? Just more fast food, you know, um, like it's just processed. more processed food mm -hmm. to where even, and we're talking, I mean, not to age myself, but I grew up in the eighties in Greece. Um, when we would eat there as a child, like everything came from the backyard or mm -hmm. the local fishermen, you know, where now we've got more grocery stores because mm -hmm. we live in, we're from a pretty remote part of Greece. I mean, like we, there wasn't a lot of cars there <laughs> back in the eighties. It was like people still riding donkeys and stuff. But um, yeah, I think, you know, it, it, and they're just behind us where we've kind of gotten detached from actually growing our food and knowing exactly where it came from. Yes. And, you know, unfortunately, I think the whole world is slowly. Yeah, moving. it is sad, it's but that's why I always tell people, you know, as a, a health coach and, and doing lab testing with people to find out what the best diet is for you. And I like to look at genetics as DNA fit or some type of program 
to look at their genetic profile because some people can't tolerate as much saturated fat as others, as we said, but also look at your ancestry background. Where are you from? What's the best diet for you based on your ancestry background? Are you from, you know, Northern European or you're from South Africa? You know, it's going to be yeah. different, but also, you know, the main thing I like to think about with people is eat real food, know where it's from. And I was loved yeah. years ago. I read Michael Pollan's book food rules. And I always remember just each page was just a simple quote. They can always remember, you know, eat what your great grandmother ate and mm. the label shouldn't have a label, but you know, the foods on it, you should be able to understand the ingredients and just simple things like that. And, you know, eating food that you can grow and get from the farmer's market is ideal. I think, and just things that Definitely. you can fish and the meat and everything, but olive oil, I think it's just been another thing that's been contaminated over the years. And yep. You know, I, I get mad when I go to the grocery store and see all these oils and olive oils in these clear bottles. And yeah, we can talk about the difference of what kind of what you want to look for when you're looking for an olive oil because they're so oxidized and damaged. No, there is. And, and I've actually like asked some customer or people before in grocery stores, like, because you see them staring at a wall of olive oil. It's like, what are you looking for on that label? You know, and there is, and I always tell people like this, like, if I didn't own an olive oil company, but have like the knowledge I do about olive oil, what would I look for when I go to a grocery store? And there has been times when I've been traveling, it actually happened to me last month and I had no olive oil of ours with me. So I had to run to the grocery store and get some, <laughs> you know, so um, that does happen once in a great while. Um, the first thing I look for on a bottle or a can is uh, that it's organic. Like I, I wouldn't even really touch non-organic olive oil unless I knew the farmer that it was coming from and they just didn't have the certification because that does happen, especially with some older generation farmers that they just don't have the money to pay for getting every single one of their trees certified. Mm -hmm. um, and it is a process. But um, overall, if I'm getting a bottle at the store, it's going to be organic. Um, after that, you're looking for the packaging. There is like BPA-free tin cans or really dark glass bottles, which block the light. Um, incandescent light or sunlight will harm olive oil. It will slowly degrade it. We've actually tested our own olive oil at um, as soon as it's pressed at the six month at the 12 month and the 18 month to see what it tested out at. And at about 12 months, it's at about 75 to 80% the polyphenol levels that it was when it was originally pressed. Wow. So it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just yeah. not as good as it should be, Fresh. you know? Yeah. Um, so you definitely want a dark, dark bottle of some sort where it's not gonna see the light of day. After that, you want to look at the harvest date. Now, the harvest date is generally not on a lot of bottles um, because that tells you how old it is. There will be an expiration date on the back, and that could be anywhere from 24 months to 36 months to 30. I mean, it's, anyone could put whatever they want on it. Um, the problem with the harvest date is a lot of times you won't see one is because a lot of big olive oil companies, what they'll do is they'll buy olive oil in bulk from all over the world and mix it up together and then bottle it and then call it a product of Italy or Spain or wherever it came from and then sell it. So you really don't know how old that olive oil is because they might've bought a year old olive oil in bulk and six month old oil. And then we're gonna mix it with our fresh oil. That happens a lot with the really large companies because they just can't produce the amount that they export. Um, so that's one of the biggest problems. So always look for a harvest date on, on the bottle itself. Outside of that, you might see some other um, certifications in Europe. We have what's a PGI, it's a protected geographical indicator. That means that product came from one specific location to kind of get away from what I just talked about with it being from all over. Like, you know, if you have a PGI certification, that means, hey, all this olive oil came from this state in this country. Um, so outside of that, that's really what you're looking for. Organic, the age, the container that it's in. And if you do buy it in a grocery store and it isn't glass, grab it from the back because <laughs> oh. it was 
directly in the light. That's a good trick. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I know, uh, you know, I have family members, I won't say who, but they'll buy the big containers at, say, Costco. They're plastic and clear. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's good quality olive oil and no, you kind of think you'd be healthy having olive oil instead of having bad fats of even canola oil. So it's a yeah. big difference of what you get. Well, that's, and that's unfortunately, um, people are trying to do the right thing in most cases, I think, yes. but they end up doing the opposite because the quality of food they're picking. Um, and unfortunately, I'm not going to name any grocery stores, but a really healthy grocery store that uses like um, soy, soybean oil or canola oil inside of all of their dressings and inside of their, you know, it's like, oh man, you're using this awesome product, but now you're ruining it with the kind of oil you're putting in it. Yeah. So a lot of times when people will get like a healthy dressing and it'll say, olive oil on the back on the front but on the back it's like mainly soybean oil or canola and then a little bit of extra virgin olive oil yeah you know? i know if people don't realize you know what's it's not 100 olive oil in a lot of those containers but also when you're getting pre-made food they're at restaurants or grocery stores they're not using the healthy oils that's why i rather eat at home yeah plus my husband's a great chef but i just don't the oils you know you're going to go out to eat, you're not going to get good quality olive oil, especially you see them leaving the clear bottle of olive oil on the table or that you ask for olive oil, they bring it <laughs> to you. So I did like the samples. You guys have these great travel oh, packs okay. that yep. you can That's take because you want to pack, put them in your purse and take like my Redmond real salt bottle and then take my olive oil yep. and have it. So when you're out, you can put that on your salad or your cooked vegetables, your food. Yeah. Unfortunately, the, um, and I grew up in the restaurant industry, being Greek, like most of my family members <laughs> in restaurants. Um, but I've also like worked in some fine dining restaurants when I was younger. And I know, and I have got a lot of friends in the industry. Mm -hmm. When it comes to like their cooking fats, it's not really always a priority to have organic extra virgin olive oil because it's more expensive. expensive yeah. yeah, it is, you know, and um it's kind of a tragedy, you know, you see like a really great piece of wild caught fish and then it's cooked in like subpar olive oil you know it's almost yeah. like you're, you're taking something great and kind of ruining it but yeah we always bring those uh travel packets to dinner with us usually because unfortunately like dressings are really the worst culprit out there with the kinds of oils that they're using in there but what you learn, yeah but what you learn mm -hmm. is to take you know ask for olive oil instead it's like oh i can't do the dressing because they're filled though. but then you're getting olive oil that's that not good for you either <laughs> so it's as best to just pack your own and have a nice yeah. big, uh, purse to carry everything in <laughs> yeah no i know that, uh, that that's literally why we came out with those little travel packets they're uh totally recyclable and you know, the good quality materials, but we wanted people to be able to take them to dinner with them or to lunch with them or just pack them, you know, what if when a lot of people used to work at at yeah. the office, if they would bring their lunch with them, True. you know, you could put some olive oil on your food to get that extra fat in. But um well that's a good you know segue into eating more fat. So a lot of people that are doing low carb or keto, they struggle trying to get enough fat in. And I always like to say, you know, eat more protein. It's not keto, low carb is doesn't mean you're having just fat for one mm -hmm. side note, but you're going lower carb. So you're eating more vegetables as your carbohydrates and good source of quality protein and healthy fats. So yeah. having good quality olive oil is great to add on to your food and also mm -hmm. cooking with it. I know most olive oils, you're not supposed to cook at high heat. Like I tend to be a bad chef and just turn up the heat really high to get things cooked faster. But yeah. you want to use olive oil cooking just at low to moderate mm -hmm. heat, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. That Well, yeah, there's been lots of studies on that too. I hear different I've things, seen, but I was, was so much that. polarizing, like, um, information about that but i mean i i generally don't really cook with it too high me personally um i know some of our customers do and some don't and everyone's got their opinion on it exactly what temperature i will tell you we've actually done some smoke point um testing yes and it doesn't always smoke at the same exact like all extra virgin olive oil doesn't smoke at like 388 you know it's all mm -hmm. 
the, the actual um, olive oils do make a big difference up to like 50 degrees difference when they'll start smoking. Um, but either way, there's, even if you never cooked with olive oil, there's so many different ways of getting it in, whether it's, uh, a lot of people just eat it raw by itself. But if you get um, good quality olive oil, it's yours. You can yeah. just take a spoonful of it, right? Just oh, like yeah. Have a snack during mm -hmm. the day and just get some good, a dose of fats. To yeah, either just straight or you can throw it in a smoothie. I have some friends that put it in coffee. <laughs> like, I haven't done that. But <laughs> hey, but your skin is a mouth, I would say. So I know it's a good eye serum to put olive oil oh, on yeah. your face, like a face serum. So, and you must get the benefits of olive oil because there's, you always say, I always say, skin is your mouth. I've learned years oh, ago. Yeah but that'd be good, Ray. If you don't want to eat it, put it on your face. <laughs> yeah, I know we have, I, and it's funny, like I've asked, like I've done polls with our email list or on our social media, like what do you use olive oil for? And we get like, sometimes like the most random new things that I've never heard of before, you know? So like whether it's on ice cream or yeah. people put it in their dog food for their pets, like, <laughs> you know, so a lot of people like swear by it that it makes their dog, dogs and uh, cats fur shinier yeah i've heard know. that yeah. but um yeah as far as like i personally i i drown my vegetables in it after i've cooked them mm -hmm. um usually olive oil and lemon and some salt and pepper um greek salads another huge my favorite where That's, you can just get a ton I, of salad i must add i went to greece we we're just saying we need to go back to tino's fears like four years mm -hmm. ago now tino's and we went to ia and yep. um yeah, Santrini. But all I ate every day, because I don't like Greek salad. is squid everyone had, right? Is it squid that everyone ate yep. there? But Octopus or squid. They have both. Yeah. yeah. My husband would eat that. I can't do that. Grosses me out. But the Greek salad is amazing. And just having that olive oil all over was like I seriously. Especially if you like <laughs> just let it sit there for like an hour and all, all the tomatoes and cucumbers just soak in all the oil. But that's kind of thing, like if you go to Italy and you have tomato, mozzarella, caprese salad, same mm -hmm. thing with Greece. If you have a Greek salad, you come home and you make it, ugh, doesn't even taste good. <laughs> it's good. You got to go to country to eat the good quality of food off the ground, grown right yeah. there. No, totally. And that's really where like the whole soil and climate and all that comes into play and really makes a difference. Well, that's right. what we've talked a lot about. I've learned nutritional therapy and mineral deficiencies is looking at the soil in the US, even talking about wheat and how you can eat bread in Italy or Greece when you're over there and not have the damage people have with often wheat intolerances, gluten grains oh, yeah. when they're here, it's so different because of the, the way it's grown is so different in the soil. It's so damaged yeah, yeah. here. No, totally, totally. And Unfortunately, <laughs> not and always the best I've thing. Heard with grapes but. too. So I wonder with the olive oil, you're saying olives as well, because I've heard that with grapes, having wine now from the US isn't as good pure quality without the glyphosate, different contaminants. Same thing probably yeah. what you're saying with the olive oil, olives. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't tested the olive oil from the States ever, but I, I would, if the grapes are contaminated, probably everything else in the soil is. Mm -hmm. um so it's just kind of like where we are today and unfortunately just trying to do the best with what we can do you know what we can control yeah um but that's so. what i see as a doing health and fitness coaching with people i run functional lab testing now and seeing how many people have liver congestion and toxicity mm -hmm. and it's so much of it's not just you know, from pathogens, but it's our environmental toxins coming from the food that we eat. And I think a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize, like you're saying, you know, those olives, those trees are sprayed, the soil's damaged. When you press the olives, you're still going to have those pesticides in there and how much of that's coming into our body and how that contributes to our whole metabolic chaos that we could be yeah. resulting in if the liver is not able to keep up with that constant detoxing it has to do every day with all those toxins coming in from the environment. Yeah, no, it definitely hundred percent plays a role. I mean, I mean, just some testing I've done myself. Like I, I remember two, three summers ago when I went to Greece, I made like a, a 30 day thing where I was like, I'm only going to eat foods from the backyard, literally like the fruits, vegetables yeah. and, and seafood that we caught. But it's amazing how different you feel really quickly when you take away all the other stuff, you know, I know. 
So do you do kind of a, a low carb paleo kind of diet yourself? You said, you know, starting with crawfish Usually, and olive oil. Yeah. Well, yeah. When, I mean, I've, I've kind of played around with like a lot of different things, uh, yeah. whether it's uh, just doing straight paleo. That's kind of the first thing I ever did that I thought of as um, basically thinking about what I was eating instead of just eating whatever. Um, I've done like keto a few times strict for a few months here and there at a time. It just changes around a little bit where I'm at, what I'm doing, if I'm Which traveling or not. But I think that's great too. And I, it's just to always mix it up. And, and I really believe in sustainability, but eating the basis of all these different diets and, you know, I hate type, you know, calling everything something, but yeah. it is eating real food. And I always say just that balances your blood sugar. The goal is to oh, sure. burn fat and keep your blood sugar steady. Or if it comes up, that it comes right back down. So finding the right adjustment of, as you need to balance your blood sugar, changing that macro nutrient ratio of fats, carbs, and proteins. Cause if you look at metabolic typing diet, look at your ancestry background, look at your microbiome and food sensitivities, not everyone can eat all the same good, healthy foods. So making those adjustments, oh, sure, yeah. but finding yeah. that good olive oil to add into it really just makes yeah, it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one good thing about <laughs> olive oil. It kind of just because it's like a really healthy thing. It kind of, and it goes along almost every diet, you know, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, keto, paleo, pescatarian. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. always like been, I guess just growing up by default, we were mainly Mediterranean diet coming, you know, when we we're over there. Um, and that, I think that has a lot to do with, um, and I'm sure you saw it when you were over there, the older people there in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, have a much, not only do they kind of live longer, but they have a, I think a higher quality of life in their later stages. Well, of blue life. zones study. Yeah. Like yeah. They just you know, they're pretty much just eating like real food is what it boils down to. And then even like some of the more processed for like grains and whatnot, they're grown differently over there. Yeah. And, you know, it's, well, I uh, think when you look at the blue zones, people are socially active. They have a community they have, you know, spiritual connection with people or religion. They have mm. real food grown from the land that they're on and they're physically active. They're always moving and they're, yeah. you know, you see people in Italy and, or Greece and anywhere around there. When I travel in Spain, people are sitting on the bench and they're playing bocce ball or whatever it's called there. You know, they're just yeah. outside and getting exposure rather than you come to the U.S. and well, it's, I think I'm in San Diego now, kind of Solana Beach area that people are out and about more so than where the weather zone is nice. But I think that makes a difference. As I always talk about the lifestyle behaviors, you are what you eat, but also mm -hmm. how you live your life and finding that right, I call the holistic method that you're working on the sleep and the stress and moving throughout the day, as well as eating real food to burn fat. Oh yeah, definitely. So, yeah. I mean, that, that's the biggest thing that you'll probably notice being over there is everybody's moving. Like yeah. everybody walks everywhere. Well, Tinos, cases. no one drove, you know, we would like just walk into town and we're at this little place with Airbnb and just everyone, you just walk or. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're going to go to the store two miles away. I'm just going to walk there, you know, just <laughs> think, not think twice about it. Like, why would I drive that close? Actually, I just had a flashback. Tinos is if anyone's been there, it's a tiny little island in one little town, pretty much. But they have this some religious day once a year that there's the church on top of this hill and there's a carpet going all the way up it. And once a year they climb crawl all the way up there on their knees or something. And they have you not heard that? They'd be climbing and they'd sell knee pads and stuff to crawl all the way up there. It was very bizarre. So yeah, they they're, do their active climbing. <laughs> Every church on every little part of Greece has their own thing. I do know I hiked about 25 miles with my, at the time, probably 67 year old aunt. And it was up mountains. It wasn't like a little walk in a park. Like we were going uphill the whole way. And I mean, she was, she walked that thing like a champ. <laughs> like, I had a tough time keeping up with her, but I was like, it's just such a difference from when you look at like, how people live over there and here. And I think, you know, food, I think is a foundation of it at mm -hmm. the end of the day. And then um, I think they live a lot more stress-free and they move, they yeah. just move a lot more. And then 
another thing when it comes to food is it's um, like we said, they, you pretty much know where your food's coming from, but food is a much bigger event over there. Mm-hmm. You know, like lunch isn't a few hours long and so is dinner and yeah. you don't like really eat in front of a TV. Like you're sitting at a table with eight, 10 people. other people. Yeah. And that's just what happens at every day, lunch and dinner. And then they finish with a shot of, um, what's a drink? The Uzo? Uzo. Yeah. We're just talking yeah. about that. How we're, they just bring you a shot of Uzo to finish off your meal. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the other thing I was going to ask is one, two things. One is taking olive oil. If you go on a, like a long hike and take those travel packs, have you ever mm-hmm. had people doing endurance hiking, a lot. running, yeah. biking? I think that would be a great thing. People that are trying to, you know, fuel up without sugar and using fat. Like a, Yeah. Like we have a lot of people using them like on, um, have some friends that used them on ultra marathons. Um, a lot of hikers and campers use them. Uh, it are actually the packets went up to the top of Denali. One of, one of our guys, okay. he brought, he, 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 uh, emailed me. He's like, can I get like 50 of those packets? He's like, I'm, I'm climbing Denali next month. It was about a year ago. So, um, yeah, Did it's been just drink it. Like when you're yeah. exercising, you get, just just to get extra out. calories, you know, when you're, hiking up in yeah. those kinds of conditions. I mean, that's a uh, quite an endeavor, but, um, yeah, a lot of, you get a lot of, uh, endurance athletes or campers or hikers that are kind of cycling, not going to be around a kitchen or a restaurant for a while. Yeah. I think it'd be great. Yeah. But so the difference of taking a real pure olive oil as yours, drinking it like that, you wouldn't want to mm-hmm. do that with the stuff I buy at the grocery store. It would taste differently. I would think. And be oh, it's going to be taste totally different. Yeah. That's like, what, we always tell people like when, as soon as they get our olive oil, cause anything they get from us is fresh. I mean, it's literally was just shipped here within the last few months. Um, but it's to try it next to whatever they already have in their kitchen. Oh, taste we, test. The, Pepsi the, challenge for yeah, olive oil. Yeah, we do it we all the time. Like, just try it just so you can, one, taste the difference. Yeah. So that's a one thing is the taste. Um, and everybody kind of describes it a little bit different, whether it's like a buttery or a little spicy aftertaste. But um, but it doesn't burn. Like, if you had crappy olive oil versus pure, fresh olive oil, and you're taking yeah. a shot on a bike ride, you're not going to have... Yeah, a lot of it, like... <sighs> That, that really, the, the burn of it or the spiciness or the taste profile, it really is going to be much different based on the kind of olives it comes from. Um, even like a brand new fresh olive oil, um, if we got it from like 10 different olives, they're all going to taste much different. Mm-hmm. So like that's grapes. not always the biggest indicator, um, but definitely getting it as fresh as you can. And uh that's going to be really what makes the biggest taste difference. Got it. So my last question was what, how would you explain what the Mediterranean diet is since you're from Greece and your family background? So it's actually a lot more vegetables than people think. Um, We use, we use a lot of vegetables over there. Um, And then when it comes to um, the actual meat that you're eating, a ton of seafood, Mm -hmm. um, and here's the thing too, with the Mediterranean, there's different parts of the Mediterranean that eat very differently, depending on if they're on the coast or in the mountains. Mm. But um, like if you're in the mountains, you're going to be having a lot more goat, lamb, chicken, rooster, wild boar. Um, roosters? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Rooster is a very common mountain food in Greece. Um, and then it, when you're right near, but they're not eating a ton of seafood up there because yeah. it takes a long time to get it <laughs> down. Um, and then if you are very coastal, um, and Greece is basically mountains or a coastline, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's not really a lot of flat land there. Um, but coastline, you know, it'll consist a lot of anything that comes out of the ocean, um, from little fish to bigger fish to sea urchins and octopus and squid. Um, olive oil definitely is the foundation. Um, it's used, it's the main fat that's used, um, outside of that there's maybe if you can use like uh, animal fat would be the other fat that we have it's like animal fat or olive oil, uh, maybe some cheese and butter. But um, outside of that, that that's it for the fats. The, your, most of your carbs are coming from fruits and vegetables. Fruits are seasonal. 
um, they'll dry them out and have them all year round, especially like figs, like dried figs. Mm -hmm. Those are actually my favorite thing endurance wise. We have fig trees. We have two fig trees in our new house. <laughs> well, they're so, they're so, uh, they're, they're pretty, uh, not really keto, but oh. if you need a quick boost of energy, like they, sugar, uh, they're straight yeah, sugar. They're a lot of, a lot of sugar in them, but those were always my favorite fruits growing up and I love them dried too. Great for a uh, hiking or whatnot. But, um, yeah, I mean, the big thing is just like, again, it kind of is a no brainer, but like, um, real food that comes from that region, which is, yes. you know, that's anyway. what we're saying, right? Yeah. It's eating real food. That's local, fresh from your region that you grow, pull up a tree, dig it out of the ground or out of yeah. land. Yep. I mean, it's, you know, and like, like we said earlier, it's kind of changing a little bit, you know, with things getting imported more than they used to, but as long as you're still in the villages, you can usually do a normal, regular Mediterranean diet. But then you look at COVID, the pandemic is more mm -hmm. research shows it's more insulin resistant people and people are metabolically damaged. So, you know, I saw a research study that Mike Mutzel posted the other day that the US and the UK had so many more people suffering from COVID and passing away, sadly, mm -hmm. but so many more people had metabolic damage. And I think you go back to what you just talked about and what we're discussing about the blue zones and, mm -hmm. and that lifestyle if people could go back to their roots and eat, you know, based on their ancestry background and have that physical activity and movement and happiness and joy is the, the outcome better for having viruses that are spreading like that yeah. to, be able to fight it off naturally. Yeah. I think that's going to be kind of um, totally agree and think that's probably going to be the case for almost any disease in most cases, you know, I mean, the, better you're eating, the better shape you're in, the less stress you have, you're probably going to, you know, your immune system is going to be in a lot better uh, shape to fight off whatever it's got to do. Yeah. So just hopefully that people in those small towns can keep their real food based food plan and not have the fast food restaurants and grocery store processed foods take over. Cause I think that's who kind of takes over a lot of towns and make it mm -hmm. convenient food, but that's not going to give you the greatest health outcomes. <laughs> Definitely. So anyways, let's talk about where to find your olive oil. Cause I think, mm -hmm. you know, having the olive oil itself, we do have a coupon code that I'll add in the show notes for people that can enter in the low carb athlete five zero we'll put in the links, but I think it's just a great bottle. It's a metal container mm -hmm. that people can get and trust that it's not damaged. That's fresh and just do your own taste test and see the difference. And you know, enjoy it. Cause I know I love olive oil and good stuff. And we just always like my husband's, as I said, chef and he has lemon oil. We found some different ones locally that are lemon and then rosemary and garlic, but just having the real stuff is just huge to, if you yeah, like food. Definitely. No, it's all um, available on our website, which is cassandrinos.com. And uh, like we said, we got the two discount codes. The one is for a one-time purchase and the other one is for a subscribe and save which you basically just can choose if you want it monthly or quarterly or whatever. Um, so they'll get 50% off their first order for that. And then it's uh 10% thereafter. But um, yeah. And the reason why we really like the subscribe and save program, you can, anyone can cancel anytime, but it allows us to project how much we're bringing over um, mm -hmm. because we are adamant about only bringing over what we need to sell and then kind of re-upping yeah um, yeah so those discount codes are good yeah i know i love ordering stuff and it you know we put our order in as well i just think it's it's great to have you know we've been doing have this other product mud coffee that i started getting in every six mm -hmm. weeks and just i think covid wise people probably would boost businesses that are online and subscriptions because it just is easier but i just find it you know we're busy and i don't yeah, I don't go to the grocery store for a lot of things and I'd rather get stuff that I know I can trust the product and where it's mm -hmm. from. And I can't do that all the time anymore at grocery stores, even if I go to a health food store. So I appreciate companies as yourself that have a story, have a purpose mm -hmm. and on a mission you can trust that they'll stick with their, their family's original plan. Yep. No, definitely just trying to share our family oil with everybody over here Yeah, and have, yeah. A, have olive oil the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> Yes, for sure. So thank you for sharing your story today and just talking a little 
but a different topic of olive oil on the show just for low carb athletes. But I think everyone's always trying to figure out what to eat and mm -hmm. how to get more healthy fats in their diet. And I think a lot of people don't know that there's good fats and there's bad fats. Even if it's olive oil, there's a lot yeah. of bad options out there. And I just wanted to have this topic on the show to kind of explain the differences of good quality versus poor quality, what you should look for. So I think we went over all that, but if you guys have questions, please just add a link. Um, is it in the show notes that we can send in questions to Tony and his team and uh, get you guys all of oiled up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome.